Hi guys, welcome to another video in this channel. Today we're going to be exploring a topic that a lot of people have, well, probably not like a lot, a lot of people, but it's been mentioned a couple of times and it's uh, trim sheets. So uh, we're going to be talking about trim sheets and I'm going to be doing a quick demo on how you can create your own trim sheets. Now, this is a super, super like complex topic. Um, it, it's, it's something that environment artists do quite a lot. I'm not an environment artist myself. Like I, that's not my specialty. I, of course, know... Um, most of the pipeline, but uh, environment is not something that I do full time. Um, so the best way that I can explain uh, tileable textures to you is starting with, of course, uh, or sorry, trim is trim sheets is starting with tileable textures, right? So we know that whenever we need to do a like a big chunk of space, when we need to map a big chunk of space, it would be pretty much impossible to have like an 8K or a 16K or a 32K texture for like, let's say the wall of a castle, right? And uh, what we normally do when we need to project a texture in uh, along very big surfaces is we create a tileable texture, right? It's a texture that's gonna be repeated multiple times and it's gonna cover a big space of, of our, our scene. And this is a technique that we've covered before and it's, I think, fairly easy to understand, right? Like we just duplicate the same thing a lot of times. Trim sheets, I would call them, and uh, if there's an environment artist watching this who wants to uh, correct me, I would say are like an evolution to tileable textures because not only are they textures that, yes, we're going to be repeating, but they also serve this sort of like modular way to construct things. So I'm going to show you this one that I found, and I think it's a really, really great example by uh, Kurt, uh, this is Kurt Williams. So Kurt here built this a very nice wood trim texture. Now, where would you use something like this? You've probably seen like old houses where there's like decorations on the roofs or uh, or near the ceilings or near the bottom of the walls or something. That That's something that these things would be helpful uh, for. Uh, I've also seen like examples like this one right here, which is more like a sci-fi uh, trim sheets. And um, the, the basis of what I'm about to show you is the same. We're going to be designing a sheet that we're going to be able to reutilize a lot of times in our scene with simple polygons, okay? So we modeled a really complex thing, and then we simplify it and, and use it for a lot of different uh, uh, parts of our scene. I'm, 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 I'm going to try to show you all of the, of the process, okay? So um, what we're going to do is, first of all, we need to start with a plane. And we need to set our plane so that it's relatively easy to imagine that this thing is going to be like, you're going to interact with this plane as a normal like human, right? So I usually like to create a cube, scale this to 180. There we go. And then change this to like 90 and 90. That's roughly, roughly the volume that a human uh, would occupy. We can move the pivot point down and then snap this thing to the grid so that we're exactly on the, on the floor. There we go. Now we can grab the, the floor plane and what I'm going to do is I'm going to increase the size of this thing, let's say to something like three meters. So we know that these are centimeters, right? So if I say 200, that's going to be two meters, right? So I'm going to change this to 300 and it's going to be three by three. This is a three by, it's going to be a three by three uh, trim sheet. And we can make this as big or as small as you want. We can go like 500. Um, I think 500 is going to be a little bit better. So imagine this is our wall and this is a character that we're going to be uh, using as, as a reference point, okay? So I want to do a sci-fi uh, like trim sheet for this one. And uh, we're going to do three sections of the of the tiles, okay? Uh, I've seen trim sheets that have like seven, ten, eight, like so many sections. We're going to keep it simple and we're going to do three sections. So I'm uh, imagining that uh, this bottom section right here are going to be like panels, okay? So just like this big sci-fi panels that you sometimes see uh, in movies. And then this one right here, it's going to be just like a, like a border with a couple of like light sections or something. And finally, we're going to have like a, like a cable section, okay? Like a cable section for the whole thing. So the way this works is we're going to model, uh, well, at, at least this technique that I'm going to show you, because you can do this in ZBrush and other, other software, but we're going to keep everything in Maya so that if you guys have uh, no experience in other softwares, you're going to be able to, to do this. And the way this works is we're going to plan out our construction inside of this grids right here. So for instance, as I mentioned, I'm gonna delete all of this elements right here because I know that this is the main section that I wanna do. And then I'm gonna do like this section right here and finally that little section up there. Okay, so those are gonna be like my sections for the trim sheet. 
And, and one of the key things that we need to do is we need to model in such a way that this thing becomes a tileable texture because not only are we going to be repeating this uh, several times, we need to make sure that um, everything just like flows into the same uh, place. That's why I mentioned that I, I think 3 sheets are like the evolution or not the evolution, like another variant on tileable textures because tileable textures, you just use it for like a general plane, right? But for trim sheets, you use sections of the tile thing and usually, usually you're going to be trimming them from left to right, okay? So things are going to be mapped from left to right and they're, they can be like really, really, really long and they're going to be repeating the same texture. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to duplicate this one right here. I'm going to call this my low uh, poly. There we go. And then this one, I'm going to delete this peaks or things right there. Now I want my wall to be made out of four sections right here. So I'm going to delete all of this guys and I'm going to go into mesh tools, insert edge loop, double click and multiply um, edge loops and we're going to say three. So as you can see, this is going to divide my wall into three. Actually, I think th uh, two, two divisions look a little bit better. So we're going to say two. There we go. Now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to model, like normally model whatever I need to model. So for instance, I'm going to delete one of these faces and one of these faces, and I'm going to use this face to model the little like sci-fi panel that I want. So I'm going to, I don't know, let's start with an extrusion. Let's bring this forward. Let's do a little bit of an offset. And then I'm going to grab probably like all of the edge loops and just bevel them. No, probably not all of them. Let's start with this ones right here. And I'm going to bevel them. Keep a small fraction. That looks interesting. And then let's add like a, like a nice little like cut in here. So I'm going to add with my cut tool right here. Let's cut right there. Let's say the mid section and then that's 70%, 70%. There we go. I'm going to grab this vertex right here. Let's push them out. And then I can grab like this edges and this edges right here. So we're selecting like the like the hexagon shape right there. And this is one of the cool things. Uh, one of the things that I really like about um, like this sort of like tile level things, the, the high poly, you don't have to worry about topology as much um, because it's going to be baked down, right? So, so you can go crazy with this sort of thing. For instance, here, I'm going to add this sort of like cut right there and go in a little bit. And there we go. So as you can see, we created this very, very nice line there for our, for our paneling section. I might be like tempted to add like another line, like down here, maybe a small one, like this square piece right here. Let's say control E, let's offset a little bit and then control E and let's push up and do a little bit of an offset as well. There we go. So, so this is what, this is the information that I'm expecting to see on my bake. Now, one very important thing, you don't want to uh, like uh, go out of the, of the square, because as you can see here, if we go out of the square, like this lines right here, they're going to create a, an issue. So I'm going to grab all of these pieces right here, like, yeah, like pretty much everything I would say, uh, especially like this phase right here that I extruded. And let's move it up because otherwise the bake's not gonna it's not gonna look as nice same for that like little vertex right there there we go so that should be a little bit better cool so now this piece right here we're gonna duplicate and we're gonna use uh the the lines that we have over here like this guy right there to snap it to the other section like this now, if it's not snapping properly, don't worry, we can move the pivot point to the to the border and then we can make sure that this thing is right there. And then we duplicate this one right there. And that's it. So as you can see, we've created this very nice paneling on our walls that is going to be baked down onto a texture and we're going to be able to use to like populate a big section of walls. So imagine we're doing like a sci fi um, like tunnel or something. This is what we were we would be able to to create with this sort of like trim sheet. Very important, though, we want to add this high polys, like make them go a little bit further. So one section further so that this there are certain bakes like the thickness bake and stuff that work better if there are things like by the side. Because otherwise, the same for like the ambient occlusion and stuff. If it's empty, if there's nothing there to bake to, then you sometimes get some like weird, uh, weird mistakes. Now, for instance, up here, let's go for the for the cables now on top. 
I'm going to delete everything here. And for the cables, I want to make a small tunnel. So I'm going to create like this. And this, let's grab all of these faces, control E, push them in, let's scale them down a little bit. You usually don't want to have like 90 degree angles because those are very difficult to bake. So you want to make sure you, you keep those straight. There we go. So it's like a, like a nice little duct for where, where the like uh, cables would go. And uh, for the cables, I am going to start with a cylinder. Let's rotate the cylinder 90 degrees like this. Snap it right here. There we go. And here's the, the important part. You need to make sure that the cable starts and ends in the same way. Because remember, this is going to be where it's supposed to be a tileable texture, right? So the beginning of the cable right there and the end of the cable like right here should be the same. Let's like push them out a little bit more. Remember what we just mentioned? Um, and the, the cool thing is once you do that, like let's add a couple of lines right there with the cut tool. Once you do that, you can actually go inside of the element and like move the points a little bit to, to change like the shape of the cable. And that's fine because the entrance point right here and right here, they're exactly the same, right? So if I press number three, well, I probably would need to add like a, like a support edge right here. So let's do like a couple of support edges there to make sure that that like line does not change. There we go. So now I can smooth this thing, as you can see right there, we're gonna have a very nice cable. And uh, as long as it like it goes exactly to the same point, it, it's gonna work just fine. Another thing I've seen people do, and I like to do it sometimes whenever I'm uh, teaching this subject, is to add like a block, like just like a some sort of like piece that holds things together and that way you kind of hide the connection. Uh, very, very common technique as well. So I'm just gonna say mesh, smooth, and then let's uh, duplicate this and let's add like a different cable there. Uh, what we can do here, of course, oh, let's go to the vertex point. We can use like soft selection as well. And again, as long as you don't move the initial points, okay? So as long as the, the initial points, like the initial connection remains stable, you can do as many changes here as you want. I'm gonna add something else. This is gonna be uh, quite cool. Well, first of all, let's increase the size of this thing again, just to make sure that there's enough room for the bake to to properly work because remember all of these things are going to be baked down into this element right here. So, uh, yeah, let's, let's go back to, to this guys. There we go. And I want to add like a, like a, you know, like this sort of like chain fence or something. So I'm going to do a cube F let's scale it up. And there we go. So the cables are going to be going like inside this thing right here. Now, remember we mentioned that uh, you usually don't want like 90 degree angles because they are very ugly. So something like that works perfectly fine. Let's go to the front view. And we do need to duplicate this in a like an, an exact way, right? So what I'm going to do is I am going to go to the border. So I'm going to use a V to move this to the border here. There we go. And now I need to duplicate this all the way until this point in an like an exact way, right? Oh my God. Ah, sorry about that. Um, so there's a couple of ways to do it. We could of course just like um, measure the distance and, and divide it, um, or we can use duplicate special, which is exactly what I'm about to do. So I know that this thing right here is uh, 500 units, right? So, uh, and this guy right here, I'm not sure about the, the exact size, uh, but if we like duplicate this several times, like 10 times, I will need to just split the distance by five units, right? Because uh, five or not uh, five by eight, 100 units, and, and that should be it. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to freeze the transformations in this guy. I'm going to say file, uh, duplicate a special, sorry, edit, duplicate a special. And I want, in this case, I want 50 copies. So there's 49. And I want the distance between each copy, in this case is X right here, to be uh, 10 units, right? So that should give me each object divided by one unit. As you can see right there, we might need one more right here. Should be again fairly easy to find. And that's going to be like the, the midpoint. That, that's where the, where the bag is going to end. So now, as you can see, we've created this very nice shape, which again is going to give us the sort of like cable effect. Cool. 
So that's the that would be the second piece, the second piece of our of our element. Let's go for the third piece now. Um, and again, I'm going to duplicate this guy, isolate the new duplicated element. And this one, I want to be like some sort of like headlight thing, right? So um, I'm going to insert like an actual there and there. Let's extrude this out. There we go. Let's collapse a little bit. Remember to delete this guys right here. And I want to create some sort of like little intense or not intense, but a little bit more complex model here. Uh, like kind of like little lamps, uh, like stuck on, on different like positions, right? So let's start with something simple. Let's do like a cube. And then oh, scale this cube up. So this cube is going to be like right about there. And the fun thing about, uh, or one of the things I like about this sort of, of uh, construction is that you can you can do pretty much whatever you want. Like there's there's a lot of uh, fun little like ideas you can you can play around with. Remember, try not to have a 90 degree angles. Those are really harmful for the for the whole thing. So because the, they don't bake nicely down into a normal map. So something like this, right? That'll be like a like a nice little thing. And again, if we add one of this, we need to make sure that we're going to be adding the ones that we need on the other sides. Okay, it's very important because that they're supposed to be symmetrical. If they're not symmetrical, then this whole trim shit thing won't work. Um, let's add, I don't know, like another little detail. Okay, let's add another guy right there. And maybe the lights are going to be in between those little sections. So those faces are going to be like the like the light elements. So I'm going to control E offset and then control E push them in always always offset a little bit very important either offset or go back and embevel them because again as we've mentioned before we don't want a 90 degree angle so there we go that 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 looks uh, that looks fine and um, but I, I would like to add like something else let's add like another like cut line like small cut line right there so this one will go in again we delete those little faces because otherwise they would bake onto the map and uh just to keep this a little bit more like life let's grab this guys and push them up like this see how from the front view if due to the fact that i forgot to do the offset we don't see that little detail that I just added. That's why the office is really important because what you see on the front view, that's pretty much what the baker is going to see in, in Substance Painter. So that's why the, the bake option is super important. There we go. So that's a, a lot better. I do think that's a little bit too big on the on the effect. Cool. And um, I mean, uh, I'm trying to keep this as, as brief and as to the point as possible, but you can go crazy with the amount of things that you, you might want to add. For instance, maybe I want to add one of these guys, but it's going to be like smaller. And it's going to be like every every like two other lines or something like this. So I would do something like this, 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 and this. And that way uh, we start creating this like complex shape of a, of a wall, right? Now, as uh, we've done before, this guy right here, especially this like edge right here, we need to extrude further out. Same for this one. Some people like to duplicate it. Um, it as long as the, the like the lines and everything are quite similar, it, it really shouldn't matter that much. And there we go. So uh, now the, the final part for, for this whole thing is to bake everything down. Um, so I'm just going to grab everything except for the low poly all of the little pieces right there as you can see we can isolate them this is our like our creation our our, our trim sheet right here i'm gonna say file export selection let's go to our assets let's create a new one call this trim sheet and we're gonna call this sci-fi trim sheet high There we go. And uh, of course, we need to grab our original plane, which is uh, this one. Uh, the UVs should be pretty much intact, like it's just a square, so that should be working fairly fine. And uh, again, some people like to do like multiple ones. I I'll, I'll keep it like this, export selection, 
and we'll just do underscore low. And let's go to Substance Painter. Let me close Genshin Impact. I was playing earlier. It's a very addictive game. Really cool. So yeah, we're gonna go here, select. Uh, let's go to our assets. Trim sheet, and we're gonna grab our trim sheet low, which is just a plane, right? This is just a plane. 4K uh, would be like the like a good size because we do want as much uh, like definition as possible. And then here's where the fun begins. On the bake mesh part, we need to make sure that our bakes are as clean as possible. I'm just gonna hit OK. And um, let's give the, a shot right here because I wanna show you like a very common mistake. So as you can see, there are a couple of areas that are like empty. Uh, and that has to do with the range at which the rays are being casted, right? So uh, as you can see, it's not looking bad. I mean, we are getting some of the effects, but there's some errors. So to fix those errors on the big mesh maps, you might need to tweak the max frontal distance and the max rear distance a little bit. And that should now, as you can see, like properly capture all of the detail that we have. And as you can see, we've just created the element. Now, see how important it was to extend everything to the sides? Because otherwise, we would get like weird shadows from the ambient occlusion and from other pieces here on our, on our trim sheets. And when we duplicate these things, we would get like a really, really like bad result. Now, um, there's a whole story on how to properly texture this, guys. If you guys want to tell me or want me to show you a little bit of how I would go, uh, how I would go about adding more details and more stuff, let me know in the comments and I'll be happy to record one video for you guys about that. But for now, I'm just gonna go here to my setup or to my uh, textures. I'm just gonna grab this machinery one, which is gonna give me like a very generic machinery look to it. Uh, there seems to be an issue with the UVs. That's weird. That's really weird. I mean, you can see most of them look nice, but there's a very weird effect there on the on the view. Why is that though? Why is that? Let me check. Let's check there real quick. I'm not sure if I changed anything here on the UBs when we did like the cut or something. No, that one's looking fine. The low poly or the high poly maybe? Huh. Yeah, that's really weird. I mean, that line right there looks quite odd. Um, okay, it's that one right there. So let's just delete that rust and uh, and then we'll be fine. Uh, I'm gonna change the color here from this metal base to something like a like a nice white, so we can see it like a like a spaceship, like very very similar to like a spaceship. And uh, yeah, I mean, again, if you guys want me to show you how we would texture this, um, let me know in the comments and I'll be happy to do so. But for now, I wanna show you how to use them because that's one of the, I think that's one of the main things that a lot of people uh, miss on the on the trim sheets. Like they, they are able to create this. It's, it's usually not that uh, complicated, but once they're like, okay, how can I convert this into something usable, right? That's that's when, <laughs> when the complication begins. So um, let's go to the trim sheet. We're gonna export textures there, let's do, Let's imagine these are going to be going to Unreal. So Unreal Engine 4 packed and we export. There we go. So uh, let's jump back into Maya. Uh, let's grab everything here, get into a group and hide it so we don't have to see it, uh, except for the plane one. P plane one, where are you? Here, shift P, there we go. So this guy, I'm going to sign a new material, uh, Lambert. Let's delete history and let's like plug in the, the color texture, which should be here on our trim sheet. There we go. And let's of course add the normal map. Now it's gonna be quite important. This is gonna be a tangent space normal map. And this is gonna be the um, uh, same deal, right? Let's go to assets, trim sheet, and we grab the normal map. There we go. Change this to raw, make sure to change this to raw. And that's it, our normal map is uh, working. So how can we use this? How can we use this trim sheet to create like more interesting things? Well, we are gonna be extracting faces from these areas and then building whatever we need to build. Uh, an example I did recently with a group of my students, by the way, if you guys are watching this, hello guys, how are you? Uh, was to do a like a pillar sort of thing. So I'm gonna grab this object. I'm gonna say control D. We're gonna move this forward. And let's start with like the base of the pillar. So. I'm gonna delete this guy right here. There we go. So I'm gonna grab this face, move the pivot point to the border, control D, oh, or not even control D, we can just grab this guy right here. I'm gonna say deform, nonlinear, and we're gonna bend. 
And now if we go into the curvature option here and we bend this into a circle and we rotate the line right here, 90 degrees, you're gonna see that we're creating this very nice cylinder that matches the, uh, the things that we just created, right? So uh, as you can see, it's not looking great because we have very uh, little polygons, but we're gonna be able to construct things uh, made out of the trim sheet that we just created. So let me, let me do what I wanted to do before. I'm gonna duplicate this guy a couple of times. So probably two times should be good because that, that's gonna give us 20 sides, so like a 20 sided cylinder. Let's combine this and then edit mesh, merge so that the vertices are joined together and then the form, nonlinear bend. We move the curvature. We move that curvature, there we go. We rotate this thing and we create a cylinder. Ta -da! Do the history and there we go. We have this cylinder. Uh, of course, we would uh, go into mesh and do a edit mesh and merge as well. And uh, we have this cylinder that could be like a, the pillar for like a power plant or something. Um, now you might be wondering, well, okay, that, that looks cool, but let's, let's keep going, right? Like how, how can we utilize more of this stuff to, to build more elements here? Well, we can again duplicate this guy. Let's delete this faces right here. And uh, for instance, let's say we want to build like a, like a little wall on top of this guys, right? So what I'm going to do is I am going to, I might even say, Hey, you know what? Like I, I like this trim sheet, but I just want like this section right here. That's one of the cool things about trim sheets that you can cut away things that you don't want about the trim sheet. Maybe we just want like this section, this, this elements right here. So we do the same thing. We move the pivot point here. We duplicate this. See how it tiles perfectly right there? Like perfectly, seamlessly. We combine them, edit mesh, merge, and we're gonna do a mesh display, or sorry, uh, the form, nonlinear, bend. Change the curvature. So it's a perfect circle, rotate this thing around and get it into a perfect circle as well. A uh, little history, edit mesh, merge again. And now we can center the pivot point and get this where it's supposed to be like right there. Now let's say we, we scale this. Maybe we wanna scale this out a little bit more and, and we wanna like push this up and we wanna have something here like the little uh, cables right there, right? Like a, like a connection right there on the, on the element. Can we do that? And the answer is yes, yes, we can do it. Uh, let's change this mesh display to soft and edge. There we go. So that we can get like a perfect circle, as you can see, all the normal maps there. So again, control D. And this will depend, of course, on the, on the modeling software that you're using. Like I've seen some people use the former, some people do like traditional modeling and then they UB everything back. Like there's, there's a lot of ways in which you can uh, like, create these uh, trims. The most important thing is the mapping, okay? So again, combine, edit mesh, merge, so it's a single little line. And in this case, I'm actually gonna do something a little bit different. I'm gonna rotate this thing first so that it's flat on the ground. And we're gonna do a mesh display, sorry, the form, nonlinear, bent. And now the curvature, as you can see, when we rotate this like this, is gonna create the nice little effect right there. Now. The problem, and this is this is one of the of the issues with um, with uh, what's the word um, with uh, trim sheets, is that UVs, even though we're not deforming the UVs, the shape of the object is being deformed, right? So so just due to the nature of this thing, we are going to be losing a little bit of this thing right here because again, we're not really moving the the squares. The squares should be exactly the same, but we're getting this sort of like very very ugly looking effect. Now, is there a way to, to fix this? Well, there, there's a couple of ways to do it. First, we can try to like scale them, like either up or down until we find like something that looks a little bit better. Uh, yes, we could try to flare them out. Like if we grab like the UBs right here and, and we try to like push this out a little bit, we might be able, well, not those ones, UBs, like the top ones, because this is supposed to be like a, like a flare thing, right? So technically, we might be able to find something there. Or the other one that I've seen people use before is to try and, um, let's go back here to the curvature. Uh, let me rotate this thing right here. There we go. And now the curvature, let's do the, the cylinder first. Like this. 
and then uh, the history for its transformation, because you can see this one looks like quite, quite nice. We can center the pivot point, position this on the center. There we go. So that one matches right there. And technically, technically, if we were to grab the vertex points and play around with the scale only, we might be able to conserve some of the some of the effect. It's not really looking great. And I'm not sure if this is like a sort of like a visual illusion due to the way that we deform uh, the cables. But yeah, this is this is how we would utilize a trim sheets to create like complicated shapes. And again, as I mentioned before, the the more like complex you model the things, the more the complex you model the, your trim sheets, the the more complex you can create like a, a stuff like this, right? Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna try something else here. Let me let me try something else because I do think a different UV mapping approach might also work here. Let's try a spherical right here, and then let's move this right here, scale this down. That's uh, a little bit better. Not perfect. I don't think it's working. I think it's the flare that's uh, making it a little bit weird. Let's see how we can like capture any detail on the on the elements that we have. So maybe maybe we want like this detail right here, like the little hexagon shape that we created there. And it's just a matter of a scaling DV. And here's one of the other fun, part, fun parts. I forgot to mention this one. You can actually scale this thing like wide a bit here on the on the um, on the X axis. And since this is styleable, you're gonna see the shape repeat very nicely on the on the tileable axis as well. Now, yes, we're getting a little bit of deformation there. I'm gonna have to do a little bit of research because I, I don't remember how to fix this sort of like flaring thing. Uh, but the whole technique that we've been mentioning so far, uh, that's that's what we're going for. So yeah, that's it, guys. Hopefully you like this video. Um, yeah, <laughs> it's a it's a nice it's a nice like little cool trick. Um, it's very useful. Environment artists use this all the time, and we're actually preparing something very cool for you guys, where a lot of these concepts are going to be applying. Uh, I'm not, and I'm, I can admit that I'm not the best at uh, at environment art for for this kind of things. Um, as you can see, I mean, this one looks okay, but uh, we can make this look even better with more time and more dedication. So yeah, if you like it, make sure to like, share, subscribe, you know the drill, and I'll see you back tomorrow with more content, guys. Also, make sure to uh, add more recommendations in the comments about more stuff to cover. Uh, we still have the lighthouse pending. I've seen the comments. I know that we need to continue with that one. Uh, but yeah, that's it. I'll see you back. I'll see you guys back tomorrow. Bye-bye.